Hello friends, welcome to SA Academy. So friends, we are continuing the discussion of of some Java interview questions. I hope you are like, uh, liking my series. These are some of the questions which are asked, uh, especially in the product based companies and uh, some of the companies and some of the banks like Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs also. Uh, so in this topic, we are going to specifically talk about inheritance, right? What happens inside inheritance? So uh, just like my other videos, I will discuss through examples only. I'm not uh, discussing much about the inheritance concept. I hope everybody understands uh, what is the inheritance concept that uh, one class, let's say one base class is there, then other classes will be derived from this base class. That is, they will have the functionality of this base class. And what is the purpose of inheritance? Sometimes this is asked also in the interview. So the purpose is code reusability, and duplication of code is also avoided. Also, it makes sense to, to, to build a relationship between the classes sometimes. Uh, so our relationship is also built. So these are, these are some of the things which you can mention uh, during the interview. Also, if anything is coming into your mind, do mention in the comment section. So meanwhile, here my purpose is more to discuss through the example. So friends, this is my uh, NetBeans and uh, I have created one class, this inheritance example, okay. So here I will create some class and I will keep on asking you some of the questions, right? So let's create one base class. Okay, right. So let's say this uh, base class is having one function public void and one. Okay. So if someone asks you to display how inheritance works, you can give uh, this example also. So that, let's write it inside base class and one function. Okay. You can write on one method also and uh, let's create another class which is the right class. The, let's call it derived only and uh, it extends base. So extends is the word which is used to when we want to define the inheritance and let's uh, let's rewrite m1 again here and let's say inside derived class. Okay. So that we know in which function we are inside right now and uh, let's try to see it's working so this is my quick static function and let me create the object of base class so see it is giving a warning also to add the at override annotation you can add this or you cannot add it let's see it also um, uh, i will see it later on so friends uh, inheritance so some of the questions which could be asked in this inheritance or you can say this is also example of polymorphism. Okay, this is also an example of polymorphism also. So if someone asks you what what will happen, what will be the output of this, then what do you think? What will be the output? Think about it for a while. Take one or two minutes and let's see what will be the output. So let, let me run it. And it is running. And as you can see inside base class, inside base class M1, okay? So you cannot say that, okay, the output will be, uh, output output will be inside the right class, okay? The output is inside base class. Why? Why it is so? Because the object is of, because the reference as well as object is of base class, okay? So there should be not be any doubt. If someone asks you to uh, give the example of polymorphism or runtime, runtime binding, okay? Or dynamic binding, or, okay? So runtime binding or dynamic binding that you can say uh, for this, you can give this example. And uh, let's make it another object B1. And if I call B1 dot M1, then what do you think? What will be the output? Think about it for a while. I am sure you will be able to guess the output. The output is inside derived class M1. Okay, derived class because because the reason is this is base B1 and this is new drive okay this is base v1 and so reference is this so okay this is this is there at the compiled time but at the runtime it will see okay base is pointing to the object of derived class so m1 of the derived class will be called i hope there is not out till this point of time now let me write something here uh, let me write something let's called i'm writing another function friends this is how the interview is conducted so I'm writing another function m2, okay? Uh, so let me say that inside derived class m2 function, okay? Now friends, if I call, if I call 
B1 dot M2, then what do you think what will happen? If I call B1 dot M2, what do you think uh, what will happen? What will be the output? Will the output be inside derived M2 function? Or will it give compile time error? Or the output will be something else? What do you think? If I if I if I print something like this, mm, let me write it here. B2 B1 dot M2. If I try to do something like this, then the, what do you think what will happen? Yes, think about it for a while. What do you think? So I hope you, you have paused the video or think about it. So friends, as you can see, it is giving a compile time error. So cannot find the symbol uh, M2, right? Why it is give, why it is showing so? Because at the compile time, it uh, will see whether M2 is there in the base class or not. Since it is not there, so it will give the compile time error. I hope this is clear to you. So if I have to correct this, then what I need to do is just this thing so inside base m2 now you know what will be the output output i don't need to run it inside drive uh, class m2 function that will be the output okay if you want to me to run the output see see this is the output inside drive class m2 function okay i hope this thing is clear to you uh now what other things could be asked in the interview if i do something like let let me remove this m2 okay and i'm removing this also okay because we have already seen it. Now someone might make a derived class reference, right? Let me write new, derived. Okay. Now if I write d dot m2, then what do you think? What will be the output? Yes. Think about it. Will it give the compile time error? No, it is not giving the compile time error. The output will be inside derived class m2 i hope things are getting clear to you because the now d reference is there so derived which is derived reference and uh, derived class is having m2 function okay so i hope things are very clear to you till this point of time now friends i am writing one another thing i hope all the concepts of inheritance and polymorphism will be clear after this video public void uh, let's let me write m3 okay i hope it is fine inside base class m3 method okay okay i hope Things are clear, getting clearer to everyone. If there is any doubt, then do mention it. I will present the code also. In the description, do watch the code there. So friends, what I have done here. In, so this is M3 and this is M3. But see, this is a static static method. So friends, if I do something like b one dot m 3 then what do you think? What will happen? Think about it. Also, I am doing something else also. What? d dot m 3 then what do you think what will happen yeah interesting question right maybe we haven't thought about it will it give the compile time error will it be give the output as inside base class m3 function or will it give the answer as inside drive class m3 function so friends think about it for a while what does a static static keyword does okay static keyword is at the class level right so think about it for a while so friends good thing is that it is not giving any error in any any compile time error though it is giving warning warning is warning doesn't matter warning is provided by our compile uh, by our uh, jdk uh, i mean different jdk's provide different type of warnings that's not an issue I, it will run also what do you think will, will be the output so as you can see inside base class and three surprise yeah and what will be the output here what do you think the output will be here inside derived class m3 so keep this thing in mind in, with the static keyword okay now i'm doing one very interesting thing do you know about at override so it is asking me to add override here so see i have added override method here okay because it is being or because it is an over uh, overridden method from base class so i am writing override override annotation friends can i write oh uh, let me type here can i do something like this I hope you can see my screen also. So I'm adding an override annotation over M3. Is it allowed or not? What do you think? So think about it. See what is happening. It is giving compile time error. Method does not override or implement a method from a super type. Since static class binding occurs at a at a at a compile time error. At a compile, uh, I mean when your code is compiling, uh, then it sees the uh, then it sees about the static method. Okay. Since so, if you are not clear about this, what is happening here is see you. This function is not overridden from any base class. That's why it is giving the warning. 
because static by associating static keyword with a method we are associating it with a class okay we are associating with a class so m3 is not associated with any object but it is associated with the class and at compile time the association of m3 is happening with with whom with b1 with v, b1 if i run b1.m3 if i run b.m3 or i can do something like base.m3 yeah or not still the output will be this only right so that's why uh, static when you write static behind your or just before your method then it is associated at the class level okay class level overridden doesn't make any sense so i cannot write override can i write override here see it is not right it is not allowing it is giving the same error method does not override or implement a method from a super type so adding a oh, adding at an annotation override before a function which has not been which has not been taken from the base class will give the compile time uh, error okay since m3 is not taking any functionality from the base class and it is marked as static so it will give the compile time error i hope i hope my explanation has satisfied you if not do mention in the comment section i will reply it back okay so these are some of the things which uh, which are asked in the interview anything else that you think we should do here uh maybe for this class we are we are done and other things we will discuss in the next lecture just i am trying uh, i am displaying one thing to you which i mentioned before if i do something like this then the output will be inside base p and p theta inside base class m3 function so this is what the output is coming from this okay so i hope there are no doubts after this if there are any doubts do mention in the comment section and i will provide the code in the description sec section and meanwhile you can like this video if you if you if you like the lectures and do share it with your friends may uh, try to make uh, sa academy popular and i will provide more lectures like this thank you for watching this and have a good day and take care of your health